question po ba or magpapresent? Wala na? So, gusto niyo pa na another trivia? Uh, I still remember 2011, August 10. Medyo matagal na yun, no? Nagtaka kayo bakit ako nandito sa harap? Hindi pa ako magpapapost. Nandito po ako sa harap kasi in behalf sa pagpipreach natin, may sasabihin na akong konti ba para sa kanya. August 10, 2011, namit ko to sa Pinas, in Laguna. Because my girlfriend, sabi na dapat mong mamit yung family ko. <laughs> so, first time when I meet her, talagang kakaiba kung ano siya ngayon. Kasi dati, sabi nila may tatanag si Ngay, sito sabi nila may tiger look. <laughs> so, by the glory of God, talaga yung changes ni Lord sa buhay niya, talagang sobrang nagbago. Because I'm the living witness. Kasi nakita ko talaga, anong meron dati kasi ngayon. <laughs> Then, by the blessings of the Lord and by the and the mercy of God, I'm what, and she's the instrument, bakit po ako nandito din sa harap? Yeah. Yeah. So, no other than, napakilala ko po, si Binibining Michelle Tata. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, wala nang nervous ko. <laughs> Praise God. All glory belongs to God alone. Even the uh, me, I, I really not expected to preach before you right now. Kasi sabi nga ni Pastor Raday, you have to preach. Sabi ko, Lord, hindi ko po paya. But God, uh, give us the reason why we have to preach the gospel. Because God wanted us uh, to cater all the people na pinapadala po niya. And uh, sabi po nga sa 2 Timothy 4.2, Preach the word, be prepared in season, and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instructions. Ito po yung sabi and confirmation ni God sa kanyang word. And uh, lagi ko pong hinihingi kay God na yung faith po natin, it will not be came from the human wisdom, but on God's power alone. Uh, I cannot stand before you right now without the gracious hand of God sa akin po. Amazing grace po ni God right now. Bakit po ako nandito right now sa harapan po. Yes. And the message that God uh, impressed into my heart is from the book of Nehemiah. Let us all stand first and read the, the word of God and then I, I would like to ask Pastor Abby to pray for me. Yeah. Let us read Nehemiah 1, 1 to 3. The words of Nehemiah son of Hakaliah in the month of Kislev in the 20th year while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some great men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about the Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in the great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. <laughs> Sit your hand and pray for sister. Uh -huh. Praise Heavenly Father again. We praise you. We honor and magnify the name. We thank you again for this day, this morning. We pray the days that we're going to hear your words. And we thank you, God, that you are raising and motivating leaders and elders to stand before you as your channel of your word, that your word will be delivered. Thank you, Lord, for her life. For sister Rachel. And I pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit will empower her, that your anointing flow upon her, O oh God, yes. and not from her own wisdom, yes. but according yes. to the wisdom that comes from you, O oh Lord. Amen. Yes, O oh Lord, anoint every heart, every ear, that will hear your words today, and it will prosper, it will be our spiritual food to all of us as we hear your words. Thank you, and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the title of the message for this morning that God about to proclaim is 
from the divine mission, rebuilding of the broken walls. Divine means God conceived as power, sustaining, and, gu and guiding human destiny. It refers to the divine nature of God that He is in control of everything. Ibig sabihin, the gracious hand of God is at work. The book of Nehemiah are contains of 13 chapters po. But each chapter is we can learn and encourage about leadership, commitment, restoration, and spiritual revival. Who read the Bible of uh, the book of Nehemiah? Sino po yung nakabasa na ng book of Nehemiah? Amen. Amen. Lahat sila nakabasa na. Thank you, Lord. And the, the group of Nehemiah is the third group uh, came to Jerusalem from exile. Exile means a situation in which you are forced to leave your country or home or go to live in a foreign country. In short, pinalayas ka sa sarili mong bansa. So kung pinalayas ka sa sarili mong bahay, ibig sabihin you are an exile. <laughs> the remnant means remains or is left over. Those who, to who, who endure after the captivity, yun po siya yung remnant. The first group back to Jerusalem is the group of Zerubbabel. And the second group is the group of Ezra which is the priest. And the third group is the group of Nehemiah, which is Nehemiah. He is the cupbearer. <coughs> he was a cupbearer of King Artaxerxes I in 445 BC, and he was sent to Jerusalem as governor of Yehod, the official Persian name for Judah. Nehemiah means Yahweh has comported. Actually, he is not a prophet, Either he is not a spiritual leader, but he is a um, governor, he is a political leader that God used his place, his work assignment to fulfill his purpose while he was on that uh, opposition. You know, our K verse is from the book, uh, from um, verse 3 only, but I intended you to, to read the, the 1 to 2 because I want you to know that how the message came to Nehemiah. The message only, the mission began only uh, start upon hearing the word. And all of us is really God uh, intended us to heard something about the, the word of God in order for us to make an action about it. Ang nagpa-ignite po sa kanya is about the, the great uh, the province of the Jerusalem is in great trouble and disgrace. Yun po yung nagpa-ignite sa kanya. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Yung great trouble and disgrace po, ibig sabihin in great affliction or reproach. Yun po yung ibig niyang sabihin. But in every steps po na ginawa ni Himaya, we can learn something. And we can learn about about Nehemiah's response, what crowd are we right now in this room? Makikita po natin, the first steps is a man of prayer. Steps that we can learn on Nehemiah's response is a man of prayer. After po niya marinig po yung balita, after he heard the news, he never disregarded. But something, he, he wanted to ask God, he seek God first. And you will know that what kind of relationship that he has before God, that he, that he is a man who had a right relationship with God. Kasi, instead na mag-retaliate po sa, sa situation, he moved himself and whip. Sabi po niya sa Nehemiah 1.4, When he heard these things, I sat down and whipped for some days. I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Truly, he acknowledged God while he was praying. He, fast, he fasted and prayed. He fasted means, fasting means that he disconnect her, himself to this world and your own ability. And it means completely surrendering and seeking God. He acknowledged God, pray for repentance, and also he claims God's promises. If you will see and uh, and read the the whole chapter of chapter one, he truly waited God instruction before he moved. How about us brothers and sisters? Sinihimaya po when he heard the the gospel, when he heard the the word from the Lord, he 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 put in actions about it. 
And it is not an accident that God intended us to hurt to hurt something about someone's life or troubles. Diba? There is an there is always a purpose on it that God wants us to have a sensible spirit to hear that word from the from a certain man or from the one who preached the word. That uh, God He also wants to be a partaker of divine mission. But sometimes we consider it light or chismis lang. <laughs> naririnig, pag narinig mo yung word or trouble ng yung kapatid, sasabihin, uh, chismis lang. Parang wala lang, narinig mo lang and then after that you will go for some rest and then sasabihin mo na naman sa isa. Eh, that is not, uh, no, but Nehemiah, uh, he, he always, he did, he did, he, he did his part, he did his part. Sometimes uh, si Satan ginagamit po yung opportunity how we how we respond to the situation. Kaya nga po uh, nami-miss out natin yung opportunity to work with God. In his prayer in this chapter 1, uh, makikita niyo po na nag, uh, he demonstrated the elements of an effective prayer. He praised God, thanksgiving, repentance, a specific request and commitment. <laughs> That after he received the word of God, mayroon po siya, uh, he agreed with God. There is an instruction. God entrusted him to do something and he trusts and obey God. Mayroon pong agreement between him and God po na ginawa. And the second, uh, the second steps is a man who understood the importance of his school po. Kung makikita niyo po, uh, Ang bad news po became a call to Nehemiah and a challenge that would bring and glorify God after his long prayer and actions uh, and, and, and prayer and fasting actions were taken and he went and he went to the king and sent off. Dito po sa chapter Nehemiah chapter 2 to 8, makikita niyo po yung conversation ni Nehemiah between the king because he must to submit to the authority first. Sabi po, so the king asked, why does your face sa so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very afraid. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and gates have been destroyed by fire? You know, it's not, by that time, it's not okay to, to go to the front of the king and you are sad because you will be outcast. But, but because of his great determination, kinontinue po ni Himaya yung kanyang mission. And he, the king said to him, what is it, what, what you want? Then I prayed to God of heaven. Again, I prayed to God of heaven. Yun po yung kanyang ginawa. And I answered the king, If it displeases the king, if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. So na, nakita niyo po yung favor agad sa king na yung kanyang ginawa is something na nagbigay din sa king, na nagtouch din sa king. And the next is, ang pinakahuli po nilang conversation is binigyan po siya ng favor, binigyan po siya ng letter na maka-cross maka po siya sa trans-Europrets nang wala pong, wala pong any disturb. So sabi niya po sa huli, and because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. Amen. What a wonderful favor, what a wonderful uh, message that the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king, the king granted my request. Brothers and sisters, when we seek God first, the kings of kings, God will lead, will lead us to the right authority, the appointed authority that God has given to all of us. And He also guide us to the right person. And the right person is gagamitin po ni God para po ma-accomplish yung, yung, yung favor na yun para sa atin. Kaya nga po, sabi dito sa Proverbs 21.1, The king's heart is like a stream of water. What the promises of God directed by the Lord and he guides it whatever he pleases. Ang puso ng hari ay nasa kamay ng Panginoon na parang mga batis kumikiling man saan niya ibigin. Wow, what the promises of God for all of us that even the, the, the heart of the king is owned by God. 
Every authority that God has given to us right now is owned by God. Kasi siya po yung nagbigay ng trabaho na yan sa atin. All we need to do is to submit the kings of kings and after that, God will guide us to the person, to the right person. And the third is enthusiastically leading the people. Enthusiastically po ba tayo? Yeah. Ibig sabihin, eager, excited, masiga, masigasig po. Kasi every morning po tayo, di ba, nagigising every Friday. Enthusiastic po ba tayo? Amen. 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 Lahat enthusiastic. I believe that all that the LIG people is enthusiastic serving God. That is a declaration. <laughs> Nehemiah mission begins with the following realistic strategies guided by God. Three days na po siya nakarating sa Jerusalem but he never showed up, showed up himself but he also na, uh, nag-survey po muna siya sa area. He examined how big was the damage of the wall and surrounded area. He inspected the wall what, that were broken down and its gates that had been destroyed and he planned and began to lead the people. And began and he planned and began to lead the people. Kaya po, yung sabi sa Nehemiah 2.17, after he done everything, then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in Jerusalem, lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, he invite the people, come. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious sign of my God on me and what the king had said to me. Then, they replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. That everything we commit to God, all our plans to God, by God's grace, He got wisdom and understanding what He needs to be done. And so also God touched other people to help Him. Kaya nga po, every plans that we have, we should have to commit it to the Lord. Because God, sabi po nga niya sa Proverbs 16.3, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Amen. And sabi po sa Proverbs 16.9, The heart of a man pla plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Kasi pag sinabi mo pong establish, it, may, it means it will be made stable. It will be make firm. It will be an everlasting and long-lasting. Ano po siya? Yung hindi po siya magigiba. Kaya po, whatever the plans that we have right now, we have to commit it to the Lord. You know, after that he inspected the wall, pagkatapos po niya ma-inspect ang wall after three days, na, na ano po niya, na-discover that there is a different gates. The wall that had different gates. That is the ship gate the fish gate and handed down the Mifad gate. And I will show you, this is the Jerusalem map. Uh, pinakita ko lang po sa inyo para po ma-picture out nyo how great is the plan of this, uh, how great is the mission of Nehemiah. But whatever the plans and, the, and, and whatever the, how big it is, sabi po nga is God is the architect. And Nehemiah is the contractor with different subcons. <laughs> subcons. Kasi ganun po kami. In our company, if I will picture out in our company, we have different uh, uh, machines and we have different uh, uh, also manpower. And mm -hmm. after that, um, magamit na po, ma-maximize na po namin lahat ng resources namin, uh, we tend to hire subcontractors. But if you will picture out inside of this church, you know, there is a something in it that we can learn that if all the people of God will work together, we have the pastor, evangelists, teachers, musicians, worship team, po, serving team, mus missionaries, as a body of Christ working together, it will be accomplished. Po. The plan included teamwork, persistence, and cooperation plus trust with God. Po. All the talents and, and gifts po na meron tayo, we have to use it for the glory of God po. Amen. Wag po natin itago yun. In order, the, 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 the church body po, I will work together po. 
The next po is obstacles is not an excuse to quit what he already started. Obstacles po. Actually, it, it is it's really na in, in, inevitable po siya. In doing God's work, Satan is also a great planner. <laughs> that he has a wiles and methods. A destructive force to oppose God's work. He is also a roaring lion. He is always ready to devour in, or, in order God's work will not be prospered and succeed. And the first obstacles po na pag-entry pa lang ni Nehemiah is yung criticism. Criticism. Somebody, uh, criticism means insult, ridicule, or make them fun. Ibig sabihin uh, na somebody mock him and ridiculed him. Yung sabi sa Nehemiah 2.19, inaccuse po siya, what is this you are doing? They, they ask him, are you rebelling against the king? Are you rebelling against the king? Okay. Satan is also an accuser of the believer's life. Okay. He is the accuser for all the brethren. Kung makikita niyo po yung pagans nation, ito po yung nagsurrounded sa, sa kingdom ng Israel po. Kung makikita niyo siya, there is a lot of kingdoms on that. And those, these kingdoms is the one who oppose, nag oppose po siya para po ma-rebuild yung wall. But, ang naging, uh, ang naging actions po ni Nehemiah, sabi niya po, I answer them, the God of heaven will give us success and will his servants still start rebuilding, but as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. Amen. The God of heaven will give us success. Amen. Dapat ganito Amen. po tayo makifight at makibattle po sa sa I know sa enemy po that we have to to truly Amen. give them yung the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Sabi po sa, ni, sa Isaiah 54, 17, But no weapon that can hurt you as ever forced. Any accuser who takes you to court will, de, will be dismissed as a liar. This is what God's servant can expect. I see to it that everything works out for the best. God's decree. But no weapon. Wow. What is, what is an amazing promise of God. Sabi po niya sa, sa Matthew 5.11 Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil, of evil against you because of me. Amen. Wow. Praise be to God. Blessed pa daw tayo kahit na pinipersecute na tayo because yung reward natin is in heaven. Amen. Wala dito sa lupa. Amen. And the next is they plotted to attack them and create confusion. That is in Nehemiah 4, 6 to 8 po. Nung malapit na po, mabuild yung wall, nasa half na po siya. Same as yung paglakad natin as Christian, nasa kalagitnaan na tayo at may biglang aatake sa atin. <laughs> and all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. This is the work of the enemy to all the believers' life. Diba, sabi niya, ang enemy, he will use everything, even your family, even your your friends, relatives, any close relatives, people will attack you in a personal way for you to be confused if it is really enough to go, to continue what God has started to us. Sabi niya, why you are always stand, why, why you are always attending church, yun yung mga attack na iyan sa iyo ng enemy, going church every Friday, always in the Bible study, why you need to give. And it always hurt us because personal way po, yung mga, mga mahal na po natin sa buhay yung ginagamit na kaaway. And it will be confused for all of us kung tama pa po ba yung, yung faith na meron tayo. ba? And the next is the to kill and destroy. The enemy is plotted ni Maya for his personal life. Nakita niya na po na dito na sa Nehemiah 6, 1 to 2 Now it happened when Senbalat, Tubia, Gishib, and Arab and rest of our enemies heard that I have rebuilt the wall and that there is no bricks left in it. So yung pinaka-life na po niya yung ginagamit yung gusto nga nakawi ng kaaway po. Sabi niya na the enemy tried to kill your joy in serving God. 
The enemy will try to destroy your focus on doing God's work. Amen. For God has a, play, has a great plan for all of us. Yun nga po yung sabi sa Jeremiah 29.11. There is a great plan for all of us para po hindi po ma-continue ma, ma, ma yung work ni God. It will also destroy your character as a servant of God. And it's true. If we will point out niya yung mga weaknesses mo para po ma-destroy yung, yung relationship mo sa family mo, sa relatives mo, and sa friends mo. And that is the work of the enemy in John 10.10. 10. Satan only come to destroy and kill, but Jesus Christ came to give us life Amen. to the fullest. Sabi niya nga po sa Romans 8.31, What then shall we say to, this, to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.33, Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Wow. What a promise, uh, what an amazing promise of God that He has given to us. Brothers and sisters, if we will just only focus our mind and heart to the works of the Lord, that whatsoever tactics of the enemy, it was, we will never be shaken and even dismayed po. Hindi po tayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Kasi sabi po sa Nehemiah 6.16, hindi ko po nailagay, when all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and humiliated because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Amen. What an, sabi niya nga, God is our backup for every battles that we have. God only wants our full commitment or trust to Him alone. Ang gusto lang po niya is yung full commitment natin at yung full trust natin sa Kanya. But actually, God is fighting for every battle that we have po. Yes. Kaya po yung next is, yung five is the hopes and steadfastness po. In spite of all those trials, temptations, Nehemiah never give up po. They overcome the intense opposition by praying. Wow. Praying without ceasing. A spontaneous praying po. And you will see here that the faith of Nehemiah sounded forth to all the people. Kaya po, yung sabi niya doon sa prayers niya sa Nehemiah 6.9 po, hindi siya po nagpray na, Lord, get me out on this situation. Hindi po yung prayer niya. But he prayed, Lord, now strengthens my hands. Yun yung prayer niya that sabi nga ni, ni Brother Frank kanina na I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. Yun po yung pinaka very ano po natin weapon for every battles that we have po is by praying po. And the next is by encouraging his people. Yung Nehemiah 414 makikita niyo po doon yung encouraging niya sa tao na sabi niya do do not be afraid because the Lord is great and awesome and will fight for them. Yes. Sabi niya doon do not be afraid because God is awesome and great and we, He will fight for them. Yun yung sabi niya po. <clears throat> Kaya yung, yung, yung takot po ng mga tao, kasi by that time, talagang takot na takot po yung mga tao ng Jerusalem, ng Judah po, para ma-build yung, 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 yung wall. Kaya po, nung time na nag-continue po sila sa work is, nawala po yung takot nila because somebody encouraged them. This is the work of the God's people. When you are near to the God's people, people the God of people will encourage you to continue Amen. what you already started. The next is the godly wisdom. The next is a, a steps that will guided by God. That is in Nehemiah 16.20 po. With all wisdom, He instructed them what to do. Ginawa po nila, He instructed what to do, sabi niya doon, uh, to be sober-minded, alert, and he sets up other people to blow a trumpet. Sabi niya, it means that they need to be ready to the attack of the enemy. A Christian, in our Christian life, it will apply it. We should have to be rooted in the Word of God as our weapon. We need to be root, rooted to the Word of God as our weapon po. And the next is, by setting an example towards his people. He showed tremendous determination and character to remain steadfast 
in his responsibility in spite of huge opposition po. He remains steadfast in his responsibility in spite of huge opposition. And also, in this, <coughs> by setting an example also, he feed, uh, he feed 150 families daily po. Kung babasahin niyo yung chapter 6, six or seven po, makikita nyo doon how we feed the 150 families na hindi po ginagamit yung, ka, yung government's money but he used his own money. His own money po. Spending wise of God's resources that we have. Kasama po yung packet natin in ministering others. Amen. Hindi po pwedeng hindi. Diba? Because that is a God's resources, we need to be used it wisely and the next sabi po sa Isaiah 40 31 but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint hallelujah you know brothers and sisters for 90 years po 90 years po gustong i-rebuild po ng, wall, ng mga tao ng Jerusalem, yung wall po. But you know how many days they just only build that wall? 52 days. Because of his full commitment and determination for only 52 days. What an amazing God's power that worked to the life of these people, di ba? Makikita mo talaga that the gracious hand of God is truly in the lives of these people. And the next is, the last is the great, a great leader lead his people to make a new commitment to God. This is the important part that the mission of Nehemiah. Bakit po? After rebuilding the wall, after po natapos yung wall po, he found a broken lives. Nehemiah gathers the people together to hear Israel's God's law. And the moment that people heard the law, they repent and promise to change their lives by obeying God's word po. Yun po yung sabi sa Nehemiah 9.1. On the 24th day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth and putting dust on their heads. Ibig sabihin po, public signs of repentance and sorrow because of their sin. You know, brothers and sisters, all of us are being called by God to rebuild the broken walls. And that broken walls, it's represent to the broken lives, broken relationship with God and with others, is spiritually broken because of sin po. And, it, and kung lahat po tayo in, in this room has that heart of obedience to God to follow what God wants us to do, the great commission that Jesus commanded us to do in Matthew 28, 19 to 20 po. Go therefore and teach, but baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever I commanded you and I am with you in the end of the world will be accomplished po. Yeah. Pag sinabi po ni God is go, ibig sabihin we have something to do. We have an actions to be taken po. Hindi lang po tayo nakaupo. Hindi lang po tayo attender ng church, but we have something to do when he said go. Teach them, ibig sabihin, that the, that the Bible study that we have is always to teach them how to be rooted to the Word of God and the people how to be truly live the Word of God. God wants to work through us, through me and you right now. Kaya nga po, sabi po doon sa kanta na I will move ahead, bold and confident I'll be taking every step in obedience. Kaya nga po yung key verse natin na ni Himaya 1.3 sabi po doon na the, 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 the answer ni Himaya the Jews who escape captivity and in the land of Judah are in much trouble. They having many problems are full of shame because the wall of Jerusalem is broken down they are, you know, they are um, experiencing shame and trouble po because of the sin po. They intermarriage the foreigners. It means that uh, they intermarriage the unbelievers. 
which turned them to commit sin before God and worship other gods. He also exampled the king of uh, the life of King Solomon because of his 700 concubines po, he drifted away what God wants him to be. For all have sin and fall short glory po sa ni God po. Sabi sa Romans 3.23 But praise be to God for His uh, mercy and grace He saved us through His Son Jesus Christ. Yun po yung sabi sa Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost po. Sabi niya doon sa Luke 19.10 Broken means crippled, ruined, destroyed. Hindi na po nila ginawa at ni-repair po. But they make it as new. Ang broken na yun, hindi, na po, hindi po siya ni-repair, but they make it as new. Like us, that we have been ransomed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hindi po tayo ni-repair ng Panginoon, but we have been, ginawa po tayong new sa mata ng Panginoon Amen. in Christ Jesus Amen. po. A life ransomed on the cross is a life that is free from guilt and shame. Yes. A life ransomed on the cross is a life that free from shame, from shame and uh, guilt po. Kaya po yung 10 gates na pinakita ko po sa inyo, it represents to the life, <coughs> nakarelate po yun sa Christian life natin. Yung una is the ship gate, a gate where the lambs are shaped root to the temple in which they offered. So it represents that Jesus is the high priest of new covenant who is the lamb who was offered for our sin. He is a high priest of the new covenant who is the lamb who offered, who was offered for our sin. And the fish gate, a gate where fishermen put fishes for sealing to Jerusalem. So it represents that after the redemption of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, our mission is to begin a fisher of Amen. men. Amen. And the last is the old gate. The old gate, it represents the death of the old man. Kaya po, sinasabi na bagong nilalang na po tayo in 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Amen. The new creation has come. Amen. Amen. The old has gone and the new is here. The old is important because without the death of the flesh, believer cannot wander in the will of God. Amen. Without the death of the flesh po, hindi po tayo makawander sa, pero, pero siguro hanggang ngayon natutulog pa rin tayo, no? Pag nasa old flesh pa tayo. But praise be to God, nandito po tayo ngayon. Amen. I believe that some of you now in this room is in the same situation of the people of Judah. In great trouble, shame, in the situation there is nothing to run and not in peace. Po. But uh, release it now and surrender it to Jesus. Amen. And be part of God's redemption plan. Be part of the builder's team, G Team Jesus. Amen. Be part of the builder's team. Team Jesus. Jesus. Because si Jesus po yung master builder natin. Yes. And He Amen. is the one who building the life of every people right Amen. now. Amen. Yung, yung conclusion ko po is, our God is in the business of restoring broken lives, broken relationship with Him and with others. He's spiritually broken right now and He called us by name to work through us and to the lives of other people. Do not be discouraged, but not, but like Nehemiah, moving on until the work will finish through you. If you are working right now, don't stop. Never give up. Recommit yourself to God and continue working with Jesus. Focus yourself to the author and finisher yes. of our faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nehemiah stepped out from his comfort zone to do what God wants him to do. He is a political leader who purposely living in a secular world po. <coughs> Lahat po tayo is in the secular world. And he spiritually influenced all the people. And you know, because of his right relationship to God, because of his relationship to God, Nehemiah, he truly influenced, spiritually influenced, 
to the life of other people. How about us, brothers and sisters? Jesus, King of Kings, a son of, a son of God, he offered his life as a ransom for our sin, and he is now seated at the right hand of the Father and interceding us. You know, what God challenged to all of us right now is to step out from our comfort zone and to be a committed child of God. Yun po yung pinaka-challenge sa atin right now is to be a committed child of God. Meron pa akong binibigay na illustration for solving his or in her mission po. Tayo po yung nasa gitna. Yung church, yung workplace, yung community, yung friends, yung family po. That is our mission field po. Yan po yung mission field natin po. Yung friends, yung church. In church, what is your ministry? What is your doing right now inside the church? Kung hanggang ngayon po ay attender ka pa rin po, seek your place in, inside the church. In your workplace, be the shine and light of other people, community, friends, and family. Kung ikaw pa lang po yung believer sa family niyo po, you have to stand firm for your faith because your family is your mission field. God has give you this mission to do. Sabi nga po, unsubscribe from the work of this world, rather subscribe to the work of God. Our divine mission is to commit, rebuild, reconnect people to Jesus, our Christ, our Je uh, Jesus Christ, our God. Yun po yung pinaka-mission field po natin. Before I end up po, I will just hear my little testimony. Um, because uh, ito po yung start ng journey ko bilang isang Kristiyano. Last 2010, uh, somebody recruited us to Hong Kong for work abroad. You know, my ambition was really to go abroad. Have more income and to help own business. That is, all, that is my own perspective in life. I decided that time to resign from my work. And I also asked our parents to help my, me to sustain my needs to Hong Kong. Kaya sinala po namin yung lupa namin doon para pumunta po ng Hong Kong. So I thought that everything was okay, but unfortunately, we arrived at Hong Kong and we discovered that it was a fraud. Fake po siya. Yung agent na nagdala sa amin. So we brought out, we brought out, dinala po kami sa warehouse ng Wukai Wukai instead of a new employer. Yung auntie ko na nasa Hong Kong, Galit po siya sa akin because ang sabi po niya, bakit hindi mo wala ako sinabihan bago ka mag Hong Kong? But uh, sabi ko nga, um, sabi ko, uh, sabi ko, tita, I didn't told you everything because I don't want to disturb you. Sabi ko sa kanya. So I was so afraid and decided to went back to Philippines after 15 days. Because of shame and guilt, disappoint, disappointments po, hindi po ako pumalik ng Laguna. And I went to Batangas and met our elder sister, Mary, and also Pastor Karin. They shared to us the gospel, and we accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. But after that, nothing happens into my life, and I, I didn't change either transport. Wala pong nangyari. And in last 2012, here in DLIG Abu Dhabi, when I truly encountered Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior and became born again believer. But you know what is amazing happened is kung sino po yung nag-cater sa amin 2010, 2010, the same person yung po yung ginamit ni Lord last 2012, si Sister Yuli po, to cater me, to draw nigh to God. Kaya po, sabi ko, uh, what if this person didn't pray for me? Paano ko yung tao na yun hindi nag-prayed sa akin? Paano yung tao na yun he didn't persevere to reach out me? Hindi po siya nag-persevere na i-reach out ako. Don't have a compassion to the work of God and the love of Jesus. Maybe I'm not standing here before you right now and it is only by the grace of God that I am here with you now. 
Sabi nga po sa Galatians 2.20, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So all glory and honor belongs to God. Amen.